Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made these super simple diamond mesh stitch sleeves. This pattern is so easy. I would say if you're an advanced beginner, you should be able to create this project totally no problems. I just want to go over a couple things before we get into the main part of the tutorial. The first thing I want to go over is how much yarn I use. Now you can use any yarn that you'd like because this is made to measure, but the yarn that I used is this yarn from Arcane Fiberworks, which I will link below. And it is a double knit weight and it says it is 218 yards. So I used a full hank of this and then I used about half of another hank of it. So I would say somewhere around like 300-ish, like 320-ish yards is what I use for my project. The other thing that I wanted to go over is how to measure to get the size sleeves that you want. So the first thing you're gonna need is a tape measure. And you're going to grab your tape measure with one hand and you're literally just going to stretch it across your body and have it in my other hand over here. And you're going to stretch it across your body like this and you're going to see around where you end up. So for me, it was 56 inches. I suggest creating your main chain that we're going to create first. I would make it maybe like three to four inches longer than what your measurement was. The reason I say that is because when you measure straight across like this, it's not really accounting for your shoulders like this. It's just measuring straight across. And I noticed that when you don't add a few inches to the end of your chain, it ends up being a little bit shorter in the end when you finish your project which for me that's what I was going for because I like to have longer sleeves but not too long because then I kind of feel like they're getting in my way so I'm okay with this but just be wary when you do your measurements and you're making your main chain you if you are looking for a longer look a more dramatic sleeve you might want to go longer than you initially think you need to I also noticed that it depends on how you're planning on wearing your top for me I did this one where the neckline is a little bit tighter I matched it with a shirt that I like to wear versus when I've made these in the past, I'll make the neckline extra wide. And so it kind of hangs off both my shoulders on each side and I end up not having the problem with the sleeves. So it's really all kind of depends on how you're gonna wear this top. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and let me know if there's anything else you'd like a tutorial on. So to start this pattern, I'm going to be using a size I or a size 5.5 crochet hook. And then I am also going to be using this yarn from Arcane Fiberworks. It is a DK weight yarn in the colorway You'll Float To. You can use any yarn you'd like for this. It will change the outcome of the final look, but it is all up to preference. If you prefer to use a chunkier yarn, you can go ahead and do that, or a thinner yarn would be fine also. I also recommend having some stitch markers on hand for when we do the neckline. So to get started, we are gonna go ahead and make a slip knot. So once you have your slip knot, what we are going to do is make a chain in the length that you measured earlier in multiples of four plus three. I'm going to make mine about the length of both my arm spans going to, I would say about here on my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my chain and I will come back and tell you what to do after I am completed with my chain. So now you should have a pretty long chain and what you should do now is hold it up against yourself one more time just to double check that it is the length that you want it. For me, I made mine as long as uh, my arm span and the chain reaches about the middle of my hands right here on each side. So to start, the first thing we're going to do 
is we are going to skip the first chain from the hook and go right into the second chain with a single crochet. So I'm going to do, I'm going to skip this first one and go right into the second one with a single crochet. Then from there, we are going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now what we are going to do is skip three chains. So one, two, three, and go here into the fourth chain with a single crochet. So I'm going to skip these three and do a single crochet right into the fourth. And here's what it should look like so far. So we are just going to keep repeating the chain five. So one, two, three, four, five skip three, and then do a single crochet into the fourth. And we are just going to repeat this all the way down your chain until you get to the very last chain, which should be a single crochet into the last one. So I'm going to do that one more time in case anybody needs me to. So I'm going to chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to skip three chains, so one, two, three, and then I'm going to go ahead and go in with a single crochet right into that fourth chain. So one, two, three and then single crochet into the fourth. And you can see how we're starting to see the pattern take shape for that first row. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this until I get to the end, and then I will come back when I'm finished and show you how to do row two. All right, so I just did a single crochet right into that last chain space. And here is how the project is looking so far. So we have all these little chain spaces going all down the first row. And I'm gonna show you how we do the second row now. So to start the second row, what you're going to do is chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we are going to turn our work. And then we are just going to do a single crochet right into this chain space right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a single crochet right here, just like that. It's going to look a little weird at first, but it's all going to come together in the end. So we're just going to keep doing a chain five and single crochet into the chain five space that we did from the row before. So one, two, three, four, five single crochet into the chain five space. One, two, three, four, five, and a single crochet into the chain space. And you're gonna go ahead and do this all the way down your second row. So I'm gonna keep doing row two and I will come back and show you what to do at the very end of your row.
So once you make it to your very last chain space, what we are going to do is chain five as normal. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we are going to do our single crochet into this chain space right here. So single crochet, just like we were before. And then you'll notice that there is actually one lonely single crochet right here on the side. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, you might miss it if you're not looking hard enough, but it is gonna be right here. So you're going to single crochet right into that little stitch right there. And that is the end of row two. Once you finish row two, you're going to be using the same instructions to finish it up until it reaches the width that you'd like. Once it reaches the width that you'd like, I am going to come back and show you how we're going to do the neck hole. I suggest either getting a tape measure and measuring out the width that you'd like it to reach on your chest, or you can just keep holding this up to your body uh, to make sure it matches the width that you'd like your shrug to be. I also wanted to mention that once you get back around to the spot where you did the extra single crochet right here from the row previously, you do not need to do that again for this row. So pretty much what you're going to do is just single crochet right into the chain space at the end as normal. And it kind of tends to even itself out. So I'm gonna show you that here. Just going to chain, uh, I mean, single crochet into these. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to single crochet right into this chain space right here. And then you can see how the edges are now pretty straight. And then we're just going to do our chain five and turn and we can start the next row, but you don't need to keep doing the extra single crochet at the end. So that's what it ends up looking like. And you're just gonna keep going on until it reaches the width, or rather the height, sorry, that you want your top to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and I'm gonna come back and show you how to do the neck hole when we're ready. Okay, so I have crocheted up until the width that I want and it's not super wide because this is just meant to be sleeves, it's not meant to be um, like a full top or anything, so um, I'm going to go with this length and now I'm going to show you how we do the neck hole. So there's a few ways you can do this, but this is just how I do it and I find this uh, to be the easiest way for me personally. So this is what I'm going to do. So the first thing I do is I make sure to lay this out completely flat and that way I can see what I'm working with here. And then I'm going to start from one end and I'm going to count each of these chain spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to go all the way down. And I like to then find the center of the piece. So I'll figure out exactly how many chain spaces long this is and then find exactly the middle and I'll put a stitch marker. So let's just pretend that this is the middle. Then I will count out from the sides 
and I will go to the width that I'd want my um, neck hole and I'll put a couple more stitch markers. So again, just for the example, I'm going to put a couple stitch markers here and then you can take this one out and that way you know everything will be even on both sides. And then of course you're going to want to make sure you count the sides. So just make sure this side has the same number of chain spaces that the other side does as well. Um, this is uneven because I was just doing um, as an example. But uh, yeah, that's how I like to kind of figure out where I put my neck hole and how to get the arms even. Another thing you can do is just hold this up to yourself and have the sleeve parts meet where you want it to down the length of your arm and just hold this up to yourself and sort of estimate where you'd want your neck hole to be. And then from there, you can kind of do the same thing, like just count out and just make sure these side uh, chain spaces are even to each other. And if they, for any reason, aren't even uh, to each other, like maybe they're one off or something and you can't get it perfectly even, that's fine. Um, it's not gonna make a huge difference in the way that your project looks. So that's another way that you could do it. Like for me, this side is 18 chain spaces and this side is 17 chain spaces. So what I would want to do in that case is I could take this and just move it over one and then it would make it even. Uh, but for this case, if I did that, the neck hole would be too small. So I'm just going to leave it, to be honest. Um, it's not going to make a huge difference in the way that my overall project will look in the end. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Once you have figured out where your neck hole is going to be, now what we can do is we are going to crochet as normal up until our first stitch marker. Then what we are going to be doing is making another chain and it is going to stretch across and go down into this stitch marker. And this chain is going to be the length that is in between. So you're gonna go ahead and count how many stitches you have all across the neckline and that is the amount that you're going to chain here. And then you're just going to crochet as normal across on this side as well. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do that. So we are just crocheting along as normal and we are going to stop when we get to the very first stitch marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then when I get to the stitch marker, I will come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so we have made it to the very first stitch marker. So what I'm going to do now is make a chain that is the length of all of these chain spaces. So for me, that number is 30. So I'm going to be chaining 30 and then I'm going to be going right into this chain space that is next to the stitch marker. You don't want to crochet right into this stitch, the single crochet, but you want to do the chain space that is directly next to it. That way, both sides will match. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, chain 30.
Okay, so I have chained 30. And what I'm gonna do now is I am just going to do a single crochet right into this chain space right here. And here is what it is looking like so far. And then all you have to do now is you are just going to crochet down as normal. So you're just gonna keep crocheting the same pattern all the way down until you get to the end. And then when you get back around to this area where we just made this chain, I will come back and show you what to do then. Okay, so I have just finished crocheting all the way up until I've gotten to this very large chain space that we've created for the neck hole. And from here, what we are going to do is we are going to be using the same pattern that we used all the way in the beginning and we are going to be chaining five and then you're going to skip three chains so one two three and then do a single crochet into the fourth chain just like we did in the very very beginning so i'm going to show you how to do that so i'm going to chain five so one two three four, five, and then I'm going to count three of these chains. So one, two, three, and then you're going to do a single crochet into the fourth one right here. And you're just going to keep repeating this process all the way down your chain and then you are just going to keep working all the way down the other side. So we're going to do that again one more time. So one, two, three, four, five. Skip three. So one, two, three. Single crochet into the fourth. And here's what it's looking like so far. And I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way down. Once you make it all the way to that last chain, you are just going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then crochet right into this uh, chain space right here. And then you are just going to crochet all the way down the length of the arm just as you normally would. So we are just going to keep working in these chain spaces all the way down this side of the sleeve and then once you turn your work and get all the way back around to these chain spaces and this row, what you are going to do is you're just gonna wanna make sure you crochet the same width that you did over here. You're gonna wanna do the same width on this side. And the way that I always can uh, figure that out is I just count the chain spaces going up. So you can just count all the way up and make sure you do the same number on each side. When you get to your very last row for your second panel or side, we are actually going to make one small change to this very last row here. So I'm gonna go over how to do that with you now. So when you get to your very last row, what you are going to do is essentially the same thing as we have been doing, but we are going to do one small change and that is you are going to do instead of five chains you will be doing four so one two 
three and four and then you will do one single crochet into the chain space just like we have been and the reason you're going to do it this way is so that way when we sew everything together next everything will line up better because if you remember from the first row we did multiples of four and for these rows we were doing chains of five so if we kept doing that then it wouldn't line up at the end so now you can line it up and it will actually be even for when you sew it all up later so you're just going to keep doing chain four for this last row so one two three four and then single crochet into the chain space and then once you complete that last row we can then work on sewing things up all right so i finished both sides of my sleeves i have one panel right here and then my second is right here and they are the same width and then i have my neck hole right over here and what we're going to do now is we are going to sew up the sleeves so that way you can wear this so the first thing you're going to do is you are going to mark out with a stitch marker where you want to sew up to for your sleeves so i have it right here and then this is my neck hole right over here and here so that's where my uh sleeves are going to end or I guess start, however you want to think about that. But it's going to be different for each individual body type. Um, my suggestion would be to hold this up to your body and see where the sleeves would comfortably fit you. Or you can take a shirt or a sweater, any type of clothing that you really like the fit of, and you can use those measurements to figure out where you want your sleeves to start as well. So once you mark out the sleeves what you are going to do is you're going to come over here where you ended your very last um, single crochet and chain and what we are going to do is we are actually just going to do slip stitches all the way across until you get to this stitch marker if you prefer you could cut your yarn here and then sew as normal but i am personally not a very big fan of sewing so this is just what i like to do so i'm gonna take my end here and then i'm just going to find where this begins so i'm going to find the first stitch on the other side and I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So I'm just yarning over and then pulling through both of these loops. And then there is your slip stitch. And then I'm going to actually turn this. That way we can work from the other side. So what you're going to do is you are going to find each chain along the edge here and you will insert your hook into the first side and then you will also insert it into the other side as well so here's the side that's facing you and then the opposite side and you're going to insert your hook through both of those yarn over and then pull through each of those and then also pull through the working chain that was on your hook and you're just going to do this across the entire uh, sleeve until you make it back to your stitch marker. You also really want to make sure that your stitches line up. So you want to make sure you're going through the same exact point from the side facing you and the opposite side. Because otherwise it will end up a little bit uneven and it might end up a little wonky and we don't want that also you can see right here how you can see these slip stitches don't worry about that because at the very end 
you can just flip this inside out when you're all finished and you won't be able to tell they're even there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this until I make it to the stitch marker. And then once I get to the stitch marker, I'm gonna show you how I do the other side. Okay, so I just finished making my way all the way to my stitch marker. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail so that way I can hide the tail into my yarn and make sure everything is nice and secure. And then I'm gonna cut my yarn. And then what we're going to do is we are gonna make our way over to the other side. So before we get started and attach our yarn to this end, what you're gonna do first is you're just gonna double check that everything is even with each other. So that way uh, the end result doesn't end up a little bit uneven. So just double check everything. Make sure you have the same amount of stitches and chain spaces on each side and everything is good to go. Once you know for sure that everything is even with each other, then what you're going to do is head on over to this side that we haven't sewn up yet. And you're going to take your yarn and we are going to attach our yarn to this side. So you're just going to make a slip knot And then you're going to find the first stitch on both of these sides. So you want to find the beginning of the front side and the beginning of the back side. And once you find that, you're going to insert your hook into the first side and then insert it into the second side. So that way both sides are on your hook like so. Then you're going to put the slip knot onto your hook, whoops, and pull it through both sides. Then just to secure it, I like to do a chain one. And then we're going to turn our work And you're going to make your way down with slip stitches all the way down to your stitch marker, just like we did before. So you're just going to go ahead and insert your hook into both sides. So this would be the side facing me and then the back side and yarn over, pull through both and then pull through the yarn that is on your hook. And you're just gonna keep on making these slip stitches all the way down until you get to your stitch marker. And once you've finished doing these slip stitches on both sides, all you have to do is you are going to cut your yarn and then you will sew in any of these leftover uh, pieces of yarn here. And then you're just going to flip this inside out so that way nobody will be able to see these edges from the slip stitches. So we're just gonna flip it inside out and then you'll be all done. There we go. And now you can see this is the outside so now you can no longer see any of those slip stitches that are now on the inside. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see a tutorial on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more crochet tutorials.